have you, say back to your years at Cambridge, uh, changed your idea about the monarchy? Completely. I uh, grew up from the time that I first became politically conscious, so what, 13, 14, something like that, you start thinking about how the world works. Yeah, exactly. And I was a Republican. Right. Uh, in our sense of the word, not yours. So, in other words, I would have preferred a republic. I saw no point in having an, an unelected king or queen as head of state. I couldn't see what they were there for. I, you know. Thank heaven we're not a democracy in this country. I thank heaven there are restraints. Sorry, can you repeat that again? I said, thank heaven we're not a democracy in this country. And I was happy with that prejudice. And until various things happened, one of which was the, the obviously the death of Diana, which you know people still don't understand this outbreak of mass hysteria. But then the death of the Queen Mother, actually, much more, I thought, because here was a remote, very privileged little old lady who succumbed to what all little old ladies and you and I in time will succumb to, and she died at a very advanced age. And one saw these hundreds of thousands of people queuing up to pay their respects. And I just looked at them and I thought, what are these people doing? I didn't understand it. And I set out to find out why it was they felt they had some sort of personal connection with her. And I had to say, at the end of it, uh, I mean, I spent uh, several years looking into it, and at the end of it, I concluded that this was an institution that was all of those, all of those things, objections were true, that it is, you know, it is undemocratic and it is antique. Uh, but on the whole, it's preferable to anything that we would invent now. The, the politicians in this country, they represent almost nobody. They are themselves immensely incompetent and inexperienced. They've brought us nothing but disaster, mass immigration, uncontrolled crime, the worst education Only system. the world was run by The worst, the worst it would, I, look, I could do Only a better job, a better job than the world. you any day of the week. I could carve a better <laughs> chance to set the world than that. Why should, we, why, should we, why should we be so glad to, to be run by these people who have no experience of anything and don't know anything and make a mess of everything they do? What, the crisis that we're in at the moment is caused by democratically elected politicians, allegedly. Why shouldn't you, why shouldn't you be glad that somewhere in our system there are restraints on them? I'm okay. personally delighted. I think should, it should be should, more. Should. You look at the most prosperous and harmonious societies in Western Europe, they are, a very large proportion of them are monarchies. And there's something... Spain being an example, or...? Well, Spain is an example, you know, Poland, Denmark, Norway, Sweden. I mean, you know, it's not exclusive, of course. But, and those countries that, that haven't got it seem to have a rather unnatural fascination with it. Constitutional monarchies don't have secret police forces. Constitutional monarchies don't have torture chambers. Constitutional monarchies, constitutional mon monarchies are, in fact, if you look at them, among the few countries in the world which have long, continuous records of law-governed liberty. And I, I, I think you'll find that of the top seven law-governed democracies in this country, most are constitutional, in this part of this planet, most are constitutional monarchies. I think the democratically elected politicians of this country have messed it up. But are you seriously saying this country should be run by the monarchy? No, I'm not saying the country I should think be run by the monarchy. The this, is, this, is a, this, is, this is, however, a constitutional monarchy. The best form of government known to right. man if it's Sh properly run. Okay. But the trouble is, if it's, if, it's, if, 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 if it's run by the dead political parties we have at the moment, it actually needs some restraints on what they do. We are a free people living under laws chosen by and large by ourselves. The, the Queen and the monarchy are not merely the symbols of that, but the guarantee of it. We did try a republic for a brief period in the 17th century and ended up with a military dictatorship, and we feel that we don't want another one of those. Thank you very much. And it, was also, it, is, it is a genuinely popular institution. It represents all kinds of things that people like, such as family and continuity and inheritance and history and the fact that we, we have a past and we hope to have a future, and people enjoy it. Helmer is another example of a person who's, I think, come on much the same time. Absolutely. Come on. I was going to say that. Party for her here in New York, mm. she stood up and said terrific things about the Queen. I mean, she yeah. grew to appreciate the role she it, it, plays. It's a deeply, deeply unfashionable uh, institution, and all kind of young smart asses ought to sneer at it. But actually, when you start to think about what's involved and what the alternatives are, there's a lot to admire. Literally embodiment of the state. Every state has to have some visible demonstration of itself. Uh, we could decide to get rid of the monarchy and have an elected president, although whether you think that... I mean, just as a matter of interest, how many people here know the name of the president of Germany? 
It's not a single hand. Yeah, one person. I'm not going to ask you, because I, I, I don't know whether you're right or wrong. Uh, um, it, yeah, please, actually, do tell me. <laughs> What's his name? No, you, oh, you haven't put your hand up. I think it's, a, I think, I'm just trying to rack my brains, I think it's a man called Horst Perler, right? he's an economist. My point is, merely, that nobody knows who he is. Now, does a country feel better about itself at being represented by a non-entity? I don't think so. We could choose to go for an exec, but that's a non-executive presidency. We could go for an executive presidency, whether you think that George Bush or Sarkozy are great advertisements for this, uh, is a matter of personal taste and judgment. Uh, we could go for simple-minded slogans about national destiny. We could go for a racial definition of nationhood, but I think that's pretty undesirable and you know, absolutely unfeasible in this society now. Or we could just be content with flags and anthems and the rest. Um, again, I don't find that particularly attractive. They tend, those symbols tend to be uh, seized upon by people who are seeking to put another construction, a particular political construction upon them. Whereas if you embody the state simply in a fallible human being with a very fallible family, you, Im you put it into someone or a form that we can all understand and relate to and recognize. And it keeps this position of being the embodiment out of the state out of the hands of those who seek it for personal advantage or to further political agendas. What's so wonderful about republics? If republics are so automatically, axiomatically wonderful, then what about the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea? Or the South African Apartheid Republic? or the German Democratic Republic, or to be more contemporary, the People's Republic of China. There is nothing axiomatically wonderful about republics or presidents. And I often made this point during the Iraq war to those people in this country who protested against it, and, and like me, I used to consider my mockery and disrespect to the Prime Minister of the time, Mr. Blair. I said, if you did that to President Bush in the United States, you would be in serious trouble. Because in the United States, the head of government is also the head of state. And he therefore demands loyalty and patriotism from anybody. And to criticize him personally is viewed by many people as a sort of les majesty. And I would also point out that during the Watergate crisis, those people who worked for the president, the elected monarch of the Republic of the United States, and who didn't like what he was doing, sending burglars into opposition parties and covering up those activities, had no recourse because the person for whom they worked was the founder of honor, the source of law, and the center of that state. In a monarchy, you don't have that problem. These things are separate. And if you think that democracy is so wonderful, why is it, do you think, that so many bozos, halfwits, and, and, and warmongers end up as presidents of the United States? If democracy is such a perfect system for producing head of state, what is it? Uh, that makes it throw up these people. And why is it that the United States is itself full of sentimental, laudatory feeling about the Kennedy family? And sorry, it, isn't, it simply isn't true to say republics are better, elected heads of state are better. You have to examine it a bit more carefully. You look at the, the, the old black and white footage of the coronation of the current queen. You think you see everything. You don't see the key moment, which is the moment when she's anointed. And she believes that in the moment of anointment, you don't see it because it was never filmed, right. and it wasn't filmed because she wouldn't allow it to be filmed. Uh, she believes that in the, in the moment of anointment, she entered into uh, a covenant with God, and that this is therefore a religiously ordained role that she has. Uh, and it's therefore impossible that she will uh, resign. Now, I may be proved spectacularly wrong tomorrow. I find it unimaginable, though. Let's say, and this hasn't been the case, that there was some terrible corruption at the royal level. What could the British people do to oust that corruption? Yes, what we did yes, in what we did in 1936 was just to get rid of Edward VIII, an unsatisfactory monarch, and also, crucially, what we did in 1688 to get rid of James II, who wanted to be an autocrat, which was the moment when we established our current constitution and our Bill of Rights, on which yours is modelled. Fair enough. We're very, very lucky to have what we have, and if you don't like it, you have to tell me what exactly it is that you want to get rid of, and what exactly it is you want to put in its place. Otherwise, leave it alone.